Will Vanderford is a guy that writes for Clemson Insider, a guy that we have been able to build a connection with uh, when you look at Alabama and the connection with Clemson. Will, I hope you're having a great afternoon. Welcome into the game in Tuscaloosa. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, having a good afternoon. I'm um, actually getting ready to, to go cover some Clemson baseball today. they got a big series with uh, Wake Forest this weekend as they try to you know, get themselves cemented into the NCAA tournament field. Will, you've been covering Clemson for, for a number of years. I'm just kind of curious, how have you seen that culture change after winning the national titles two out of the last three years? Well, it actually started changing way before that. Uh, I think things changed around 2012 when they beat LSU in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Uh, that, to me, is uh, the day that kind of Clemson, you know, said or figured out, hey, we can play with the big boys and beat the big boys. At that point in time, they'd never really done that on the national stage and in a, in a big game, in a big game environment, and that was the first one. And um and then, you know, they came back a couple years later and they beat uh, Georgia at home, uh, another SEC power, um, and that kind of refueled that what they had started. And then that belief really of what Coach Sweeney had been teaching them since he first took over the program, which is why not Clemson? Well, you know, they've won a national championship here before. Why can't they do it again? And I think the players, after they won those couple of games against the national powers and they started to leave, then they beat Ohio State, they beat Oklahoma. And then all of a sudden, that's really because now you're beating even more of the big boys. And so, uh, by the time they got to Alabama, in that 2015 game against Alabama, they played with them to the wire. And a lot of people probably said, you know, if Nick Saban doesn't do that onside kick, Clemson probably wins that national championship game. And that was kind of where they knew, okay, they had arrived. Because they went toe-to-toe with the big monster with the big bully on the block, and the big bully had to use a trick play to beat them. At that point, they knew then they could play with anybody in the country. Of course, we all know the rest of the story. They came back and then uh, beat Alabama the next year, and then have ever since have been, they've been right there with Alabama neck and neck. And that's so, if you ask me, when did the culture change? It was in 2012 when they went to beat at LSU. And LSU team the year before that played for the national championship. Um, and so that was a big moment in what Dabo Sweeney was trying to do and, and get this program to believe that they could play with anybody in the country. Will, when, when you look at the mindset, and, and I think that you can you, you kind of look and maybe you could say, well, it's an advantage or it's a disadvantage, but let's go back to 2018. Uh, when you look at Clemson, I think they showed some things against Alabama that maybe they didn't show uh, throughout the season. I think we've heard Nick Saban kind of comment about that and kind of getting called and uh, maybe getting out coached in a game. Not maybe, it was. I mean, he had 28 points. I mean, it was a whipping uh, that Alabama took. But when, when you look at last year, the way that they beat so many teams, the way that they did it, is that an advantage or a disadvantage? Well, I, to be honest with you, they did everything against Alabama that they've been doing to everybody all season. I mean, they didn't come out there with a special game plan against Alabama, I can tell you that. Now, defensively, they threw some looks at Tua because they felt like he hadn't seen a defense like theirs. And they felt like they could confuse him with the fact that not only did they have a defensive line that could put the pressure on them, but they felt like they had a good enough secondary, better than people thought, that they could confuse him with some different looks. That's exactly what happened. Um, and so – you know, but as far as offensively, they, they you know, they, they did pretty much what they did all year against everybody, against Alabama. They didn't really change anything. Um, I think the thing with Clemson, what a lot of people didn't understand about them last year was, yeah, they played they played some games where they were done by halftime. But they also played in a couple of tough games early in the season. Uh, you know, go back at Texas A&M, um, Withstanding Texas A&M having this late rally and going for two points, you know, with a chance to put the game into overtime, them overcoming that in a tough, hostile environment and winning that game was big for their confidence as a team that, hey, even when things don't go right, we can still find a way to win. And then the next, then two weeks later, you know, Kelly Bryant had left the team. That caused a lot of adversity on the team that week. It left the team was in shock because nobody saw it coming. Um, and then they, they start Trevor Lawrence. He gets hurt. In the second quarter of that game, they're down by nine points already at that time, and they had to man up. That was their season, and they knew they had to man up at that point and find a way to win that game, and they did. Uh, it was their third-string quarterback, basically, uh, making a play on fourth and sixth that set up the winning touchdown. 
Um, and from that point in time, they knew then after that Syracuse game that, hey, if we can deal with all this that we've dealt with this week, and we can overcome all these obstacles and adversity, then there's nothing that they can't do. And that's what that's what they did the rest of the year. And then they every the next 11 games after that, including the win of Alabama, they beat everybody by 20 points or less. But another key, uh, 20 points or more, excuse me, but another key in that whole run was the fact that Dabo Sweeney played, even when he played the beginning of the season, if he's playing Texas A&M or Syracuse, or if he's playing against Furman, Dabo Sweeney's going to play a ton of players in the first half of the game. Clemson on the average would play 55 players in the first two quarters all season. And then they would, and, and they end up playing 72, an average of 72 players per game. And that doesn't have anything to do with the game being a blowout. He would play them against Texas A&M in the first quarter when the game's on the line at Texas A&M. He's playing freshmen and sophomores. I think that bodes well for Clemson as the season went on. And that's why you saw guys like Justin Ross and those guys making plays. A lot of people don't realize this. Justin Ross wasn't a starter guys last year. He, he never was a starter. Uh, so if I look at the plays he made at the end of the year. Um, so that's, I like the way Debo has done that. He plays a lot of players and builds their experience. So the, when they need them late here, if there's an injury or two, those guys just fill in with no problems at all. Will, when you look and you hear a lot of people talking about Clemson's schedule, is that a fair comment? I mean, you you, you look at the 2019 schedule, it, uh, it's pretty favorable, but it's not Clemson's fault. Uh, if you want to blame anybody, you go and you blame people like Florida State. You blame uh, programs. I always like to say this when I look at Alabama. There's a lot of people that look at Alabama's schedule. Uh, it's not Alabama's fault that LSU – is not the team maybe that they want to live up to expectations. It's not Alabama's fault that Mississippi State and Ole Miss has drifted away. Uh, but you hear a lot of darts being thrown at Clemson's 2019 schedule. Is those comments fair? I, I don't think so because two years ago when Clemson beat Alabama in 16, Clemson had the toughest schedule in the country. Um, and if you put the three toughest schedule, the last three years, put all the games together, Clemson's played the hardest schedule of any team in the country the last three seasons. So, yes, is this schedule a favorable schedule for Clemson? Absolutely it is. But as you pointed out, um, it's not Clemson's fault that Florida State's having a down year. <laughs> it's not Clemson's fault that South Carolina has, uh, has turned out just to be a, a mediocre school right now. And, uh, you know, that's not, you know, Clemson can't control what the other teams do. And Dabo does it best with his players. He, he gives them the message that it's not about South Carolina. It's not about Alabama. It's not about Florida State or what they're doing. It's only about them. It's about what they do and how they prepare and get ready for the game. And You know, they kind of go to the mentality that it doesn't matter if it's Furman or Alabama they're playing. They're going to play in the exact same way. They're going to have the same mentality, and they're going to go out there and try to execute and play the best they can to their ability, and that's all they want to do each week. And the players have really bought into that culture, and that's why you haven't seen them slip up hardly at all. Um, and, they, and they beat the team they're supposed to most of the time, and yeah, I think, you know, um, there's without a doubt the three, the first three weeks of the season, I think are the most difficult for Clemson. Uh, when you look at the fact they got, they, you know, they got to play uh, Georgia Tech to open up the season on Thursday night. Um, that's the reason that's a tougher game because they don't know what to expect from Georgia Tech. Got a brand new coach, a brand new style for the first time. And so, you know, and Georgia Tech's going to have a whole summer to prepare for them as well. And Georgia Tech's going to know more about them than they're going to know about Georgia Tech. And then, uh, and then you've got Texas A&M the next week. Um, everybody saw that game in, in, uh, in, in Kyle Field last year. That was a tough game. And then they go to Syracuse, who Syracuse is the last ACC team to beat Clemson um, and uh, the last team in the regular season to beat Clemson um, up in the carry zone two years ago. So uh, that's going to be a tough game for them as well. Uh, so they get through those three weeks, then absolutely I think they're going to run the table and go undefeated into the college football playoff. But those first three weeks of the season, Clemson's probably got as tough as anybody in the country. Um, and they could possibly lose one of those games. I, you know, Texas A&M, I think, is a very tough game for Clemson, and a lot of people are thinking that's a win, but I'm going to tell you what, Jimbo Fisher's done a good job with that program, and he's got those guys believing they can play and beat anybody. And Jimbo's played Clemson a bunch. He's not afraid He's not afraid of Dabo Sweeney and Clemson. And he's going to come in there uh, and, and, and have his team ready to play in that Valley. Will, when you look at this year, if Clemson's not in New Orleans, if they're not in New Orleans – why will they not be there? Well, if they're not in New Orleans, that means something's happened that none of us saw coming, uh, whether that be an injury to a key player um, or they lost a game that maybe we didn't expect them to lose. I really, you know, 
the only way I could see them not being there is if they were to lose, say, to Texas A&M and then get upset by somebody in the ACC or maybe at South Carolina at the end of the year. Uh, other than that, I think you know it's going to be hard to keep Clemson out of the playoffs. And then when you look at Clemson's roster, and yeah, they lost some players on the defensive line. There's no doubt they lost all four of those defensive linemen who are excellent, best probably that they've ever had. But they got some pretty good players behind them that are coming up that played a lot last year, got a lot of experience. They feel good about the defense they have coming back. So, and the offense, we know what they are on offense. They're loaded. So this is a team who's got a lot of talent and a lot of depth. Um, and so for them not to be in the playoffs, to me, it says that something happened with an injury or two that no one was expecting. I think that's the only thing that can derail where Clemson's supposed to go this coming year. Will, do you feel like that Clemson is pulled up against Alabama? Have they surpassed Alabama? Are they the new kid on the block? Where, where do you see this program? I mean, listen, Alabama fans, and I've, I've debated this a couple of different times. Uh, I mean, we took one on the chin 140-something days ago with, with 28 points. Uh, you look at it, if you want to ask a Clemson fan, uh, they'll say they've won two out of the last three. If you ask an Alabama fan, uh, they'll say it's split two to two and we're going to the rubber match in New Orleans. Where do you see these two programs that you could pair Alabama and Clemson? Uh, I, I say it's even. I, I think you, you compare the – when you look at the last four years, these are without a doubt the two most dominant teams in the country, and it's not even close. I mean, not only is the fact that they play each other in big games and national championship games two out of three times, but look what they've done with the opponents they've played for the most part. I mean – Ask Oklahoma and Ohio State what they think of Clemson's football program. I mean, Clemson has destroyed them. Ask Notre Dame fans what they think of Clemson's football program. You know, the same can be said for Alabama, what they've done to opponents during the college football playoffs in a big game. Um, and I think right now, I don't think Clemson, I think your realistic Clemson fan would not say Clemson's past Alabama by any stretch. But they will say they are on the same even keel with Alabama. And I think that has been proven on the football field right now. Um, I think Clemson is just what they are. They're the defending national champions, um, and they're one of the best programs in college football at this point in time. Um, and I, and I, I wouldn't say they're the new kid on the block because they've been doing this for eight years now. Only Alabama has won more games than Clemson. Um, only Alabama has more ten consecutive ten winning seasons than Clemson. Um, and so, and only Alabama has more national championships here that stretch than Clemson. So. I would say they're right there, and they're they're not the new kids on the block, but they're right there with Alabama as they've proven the last four years when they played them head-to-head. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fun to discuss. I mean, i I got to give credit back to ESPN. They put up the stat and kind of reminded me, uh, Alabama and Clemson, when you look at tw- the last 12 college football games, Alabama or Clemson has won 11 out of the last 12. 11 out of the last 12. I mean, that just kind of tells you how dominant these two programs have been. And it, it looks like – from from a standpoint in Tuscaloosa, uh, it, th- this one will continue uh, for probably several more years, as long as Saban and Dabo continue to do at this rate. And uh, we see the recruiting class that Clemson's already off to. Uh, we, we've had people on this week, Barton Simmons, who told us that th- this may be the greatest recruiting class on paper he's ever seen. Yeah, you know, I, I, obviously he's a recruiting guy, knows more than I do with that, but it's without a doubt the greatest one that Clemson has ever had on record. Um, and it, as you mentioned, you know, it's interesting to see because Clemson's had some good recruiting classes where they've been top 10 to top five over the last several years. Um, and it shows you the way Dabo Sweeney and his staff have been able to take these players and bring them along and develop them. So you can only imagine what they're going to do with all these five stars and four stars they're getting with this class. Um, and if I'm a, if I'm a fan of another school, especially in the ACC, you don't like seeing this because, Look what these coaches have done before getting a class like this. You can only imagine what they're going to do with this kind of players. I think Clemson's setting up with what they did last year um, and then obviously the year before bringing Trevor Lawrence and those guys in and what they did last year. And now with this recruiting class, they're setting up a run to where they could win the ACC championship another five or six years in a row and, and be in the college football playoff thick of things. And um, I don't see Clemson you know, going anywhere anytime soon not with the amount of talent that they're bringing in and considering the fact the kind of coaching staff they have to develop those players. Hey, Will, final question. Obviously, listen, Nick Saban's not close to even thinking about retiring, but the conversation does come up. 
with with Alabama fans, and and it's split. I mean, listen, there's a lot of people that uh, love what Dabo's been able to do, and uh, they they could kind of see him taking Alabama and just kind of continuing uh, the success that Nick Saban's had. But when you hear the comment that Dabo and maybe the contract a couple of weeks ago, maybe we can kind of get your opinion on that too uh, with the Alabama clause. Let's say that Nick Saban retired after this year or two years from now. Do you see Dabo, would he listen to Alabama? Do you you think he would listen to Alabama if they come calling? I think he'd listen because why wouldn't he? You know, I sure. mean, that, that's, you know, Dabo Sweeney grew up, as everybody knows his story, I mean, he grew up like anybody, any other fan in the state of Alabama. You know, he loved Crimson Tide and went to school there, played for him, won a national championship there, and coached there. I mean, you know, his whole life, up until the age of 33 years old, was Alabama. Um, and then he, he, he was let go with that coach he sat there and, and was out of football for a couple of years. And then Clemson came calling, and Clemson's the only other place he's ever been. And and he's built a his family. You know, all his kids went to high school, went to school, went through the school systems up here, grew up in this community. Um, his, you know, Dabo and Kathleen, their, their name is stamped everywhere up in this upstate community and the things that they do. Uh, with their all-in foundation and stuff like that, it's just amazing. So that you know, he's really rooted himself here at Clemson. So it's going to be hard for anybody to come and get him. It's not just about the money for Dabo Sweeney. I mean, that's nice, and Clemson's paying him heavily for it. But it's not just about that. It's it's a lot of other things too that go into it. So he definitely will listen. Um, but there's some things that we've seen, not only with the contract, with but with some other things that you know we've seen with the program behind the scenes that Dabo has done. That really kind of says it looks like he's going to submit himself here for as long as Clemson will allow him to be here. You know, I really get that feeling. Even if Alabama comes calling, I think he'll listen. But I'm not. A, you know, you asked me two years ago, I probably would have been 70 percent sure he would go to Alabama. But now things I've learned the last couple of years and have seen personally, I'm now like it's probably he stays 70 percent chance he stays at Clemson. Um, so it's going to be interesting when that day comes. But as Dabo said the other day, you know, down at basically spring meetings, you know, he'll worry about that and cross that bridge when that bridge comes. Right now, he's focused on Clemson and and, and continuing to build this program. And so he he was, was asked the question uh, down at the ACC spring meetings. He was. He was asked the question by ESPN's David Hale, and uh, he answered it. You go on ESPN and see the see the question. You see the answer. He answered it saying, "Hey, you know, I." Uh, you know, he's, he's happy at Clemson, and, you know, he's not thinking about where he's going to be in a couple of years. He's like, you know, things could change. He told us the same thing here at Clemson. Things could change. You know, uh, you know, right now he loves the athletic director. He loves the president he works for here at Clemson, and so he loves being at Clemson. He says, I don't know what's going to happen in five or ten years. You know, I, there could be a new president come in that doesn't like me. There could be a new AD that comes in that doesn't like me. I don't know. He says that would change the dynamics, but he says right now Clemson is – he loves being at Clemson, and, and, and Clemson loves him, and he's committed to Clemson University. Hey, Will, this has been a lot of fun, man. I look up at the clock, and I didn't realize I'd taken you a few minutes over, but I do appreciate the extra time on a Friday afternoon talking college football, something we love here in T-Town. Uh, thank you so much for allowing us to pick your brain for a few minutes. Will Vandervoort, ClemsonInsider.com, the ClemsonInsider.com, which is a part of USA Today and all the network stuff that they're able to do uh, there. Will, thank you again for being a part of the show. And let me also invite people to, to connect. Uh, are you a Steelers fan, Will? <laughs> I'm a huge Steelers fan. <laughs> All right. Well, the guy across the glass, man, uh, I hear a little bit about the Steelers. Uh, I hear about Ben getting too old and things like that across the glass. So, yeah, I, uh, he, he, uh, Jacob's a big Steelers fan, too. So, I, I, I did see Steeler Will on the Twitter account. Steeler Will. Will, as always, That's man. Right. Thank you again for being a part of the show. Hey, guys, thanks for having me, man. It was fun. I always love talking college football.